Welcome back to this series where it's all about how to type equations super efficiently in Microsoft Word like a pro by either utilizing the built-in Unicode math syntax, which is a very similar but arguably much more intuitive language than LaTeX, and also take advantage of the immense power of building shortcuts for anything, from simple actions like just inserting an equation at will to potentially very sophisticated actions like inserting a colored and numbered equation environment at the place where you need it. So just a quick review of where we were at. In the past two videos, we've introduced how to insert an equation using a prefix shortcut like this at any point you'd like in the document, and also basic Unicode math languages like this, which makes typing equations extremely efficient. In the future, I'll also cover how to create numbered equations very efficiently like this, which the numbers not only go in order, but also automatically update. But today, let's get back first to the typing aspects of things, and I will show you how to type all of these symbols and potentially more with just your keyboard language. Traditionally, to insert any symbols like this, you would have to click into the equation environment, go to equation toolbar over here, and then stick through and hunt through this plethora of symbols, the one by one like this. So I want to show you how to not needing to do that and be able to immediately type in the equation environment and get exactly the symbol you need. And as some of you have already guessed, today we're going to cover a lot of the symbols which are exactly identical as LaTeX. So for all of you LaTeX lovers who are familiar with LaTeX already, this is going to be a very short video for you because a large range of Unicode math language in Word is exactly the same as LaTeX. And for those who are not familiar with LaTeX, don't worry, a lot of it is very simple. And stay until the end, I'll also show you how to figure out the syntax if you're not familiar with LaTeX. And I'm sure you will pick it up and learn it in no time. In fact, to give out a little secret, this is how I learned a lot of my LaTeX, actually from Word. So let's get into it. Let's first start with all the symbols that we just saw over here. I'm going to create uh, several equations over here to get myself prepared. So if you're familiar with LaTeX, probably you already know what are the LaTeX symbols for these. I'm just going to quickly go through it in case you are not, and as you will see how easy it is to learn, and you'll be able to pick this up in no time and type equations like a pro. Remember, if you haven't already watched my video on how to insert these equations with a keyboard shortcut very efficiently like I just did, please check out the other videos. I'll link the links below in the description for your convenience as well. All right, so anytime you need to introduce a Unicode symbol, you basically start with a slash, and then you type the code, which is what we call a syntax, and then you hit spacebar. That syntax will automatically compile. So first, let's start with the multiplication sign, which is times. So you type times, and then you hit spacebar. It will automatically compile or build up into the times or multiplication symbol. So that's times. And the next one is a dot. The syntax is C dot. So as you can see, if I type in the equation environment, hit space, it will automatically compile. This is useful in, for example, you need to do dot products between vectors, you can do this. That will immediately create a dot product in the middle. And just an extra tip over here, you'll see that folding things as a vector is extremely simple. All you have to do is control B, as usual, things will automatically bold. Or if you want them italic or non-italic in this case, just command I or control I in the windows, things will automatically un-italicized, is that a word? <laughs> anyway, so this is the beauty and the power of incorporating typing equations in Microsoft Word, where a lot of the formatting keystrokes you're already very familiar with. Moving on, in the division sign is slash div, slash div space, and the next one is a partial, which gives you partial derivatives. Now this is actually a very interesting one because there's actually a keyboard shortcut if you're using Mac to get the partial derivative. I'll show you right here, that's it. And I don't even need to type the syntax. Stay around to the end, I'll show you these shortcuts. If you're using a Mac, you can take these tricks to an even higher level. But moving on, the next one is the nabla sign which is basically just slash nabla. So a lot of the times, if you know what that symbol is called, it is pretty much what you expect. All you have to do is just add a slash in front. Some of them are a little bit less trivial. You do need to remember them, and if you use them a lot, you will. But if you don't use them a lot, I guess it's not such a big deal if you forget it. <laughs> and at the end of this video, I'll show you how to look up some of these symbols very easily if you don't know the correct syntax for it. So for the plus and minus, it's actually PM. Stands for plus and minus. So all I have to do is slash PM and space. So you can see this automatically generates. And the next one is uh, not equal. So NEQ, NEQ. I think NE also works if my memory serves. Yes. Uh, so there's an even shorter version for it. I think it's exactly the same as LaTeX as well. And infinity is infinity, 
like that, infinity like that. Uh, this is actually one of those where there is another max shortcut and especially if you type integrals a lot, infinity comes in a lot and if you're in Mac, that's perfect. You just just one key shortcut where you get infinity. And finally, for geometry, when you want perpendicular, it's just perp. So if you've never typed LaTeX before, this might seem a little intimidating, but as you can see, it is very simple and basically comes with experience. The few more times you type, these languages are very easy to pick up. So moving on, let's go and try out these relation symbols. This time, let me type out all the syntaxes on the left first and we'll see how they compile. The first one is sim, the second one is sim equal. The next one is approximate um, or approx, and then the next one is equiv, and the next one is prop to, which means proportional to, and the next one is map to, and the next one is less than or equal to, and the next one is greater than or equal to, and the next one is less than, less than, and the next one is greater, greater. And of course, if you're a LaTeX user, these are familiar to you guys already. So I'll just go ahead and type these out, and you'll see how they compile. Sim space, sim equ space, approx, space, equiv, space, prop2, space, map2, space, oh sorry that's maps2, there you go, my bad, and less than or equal to. So as you can see already, one of the benefit here is of the auto compiling or the instant compiling. If you type something wrong, you immediately know that that is the wrong syntax and you can immediately go and fix it like how I just did. As opposed to in a later compiler, you might have to hit compile and wait for around like two seconds or more to have the PDF render into the correct equation. So there you go, these are the relations. Let's move on to the next category. This is a category where, especially the first few, I use absolutely a lot. Therefore, because for all there exist and sometimes even in as well. Subsets, I personally don't use as much, but just to include in the same category. Again, LaTeX user will recognize these. If you're new to this, hopefully you see how intuitive all these are. In fact, instead of me typing all these out, what you can do is open Microsoft Word and give it a try yourself. I do want to mention these are extremely useful for inline text as well. Let me try an example below. And there you go, I'm just making this random statement up on the spot. But as you can see, we can embed all these LaTeX symbols in line automatically as well. The shortcut that I create for in line is exactly the same as creating a simple unnumbered equation. Remember to check that video of creating a shortcut for inserting equations if you haven't already. And finally, let's move on to a very useful category, which is typing Greek. This is exactly the same as LaTeX as well, but this is probably the easiest to learn if you are starting out as a beginner, because if you can spell the Greek letter, you can type the Greek letter. For example, for pi, slash pi, space, and there you have it, delta, alpha, beta, theta. And if you need capital version of the Greek letter, all you have to do is capitalize the first letter, for example, delta, and you will immediately get it. The capital version of the Greek letter, etc. All right, so I think you get the idea of how this works. A lot of the LaTeX symbols are exactly the same. So let's address the issue of how do you look up a syntax if you don't know the symbol. So there are three ways to go about this. Of course, you can always just Google, but there are slightly more efficient ways. The number one is you can mouse over a symbol in equations. Okay, so what I mean is first you need to go to equation. You can either click insert and click equation to get to it, or what I like to do is I just use my shortcut to create a random equation and it will immediately bring up the equation tab over here. So for the first time, of course, you have to look it up. So you can go through here for all the list of symbols as support. For example, I want to know what this symbol is. So if I flip my mouse across, you can see there's a bracket over here which says slash CBRT cube root, or if I put it over here, slash SQRT. Later users, you're familiar with this already, but this will immediately shed light to what the symbols are. So for example, once we have already done times, as you can see, not equal, you can see both NE or NEQ will work. A lot of these will have their syntax written out over here. Some of them have more than one option to get the same syntax, as you can see. We can scroll down, and these are really cool, by the way, so we've discussed for all. But if you want a double C for something like complex numbers, you can just put a slash double and then that letter 
So as you can see, it's extremely efficient to get all of these nicely formatted symbols. Sometimes you might not see a syntax that gives you. So here so far we are having pretty good luck. Everything shows me a symbol. Sometimes it doesn't. For example here, dagger, it does not show one. So you will have to look it up on Google or that brings to the second option. So online there are already a lot of documents that are written about this. All you have to do is find these documents or PDFs and you can see they'll tell you what to type and what symbol you can get. So you can just look up everything here from just the basics ones that we talk about to more advanced ones like like having accents, which we'll talk about in a different video, how to get vector signs or under, underline, underbar, or having dotted ones. We'll talk about that in a separate video, but you, if you are way ahead of me, you can just check these online as well. This is how I learned these symbols. Ultimately, it's just learning on your own and the very frequent ones that you constantly use, you'll commit them to muscle memory and you'll be able to use them very efficiently as you go forward. Just to show you another document, there are more comprehensive ones as well that are written. These are not my documents, so I can't take credit for it, but I'll drop a link of some of these down below in the description so you can go to these amazing authors who have written all these together. So you can see how some of these are typed out. These are fantastic resources to build up your skills and you'll be typing these complex equations in no time.